Well, good morning. Jim here. Jan uh, February 1st. Just realized we're out of January, year 2020, and it's been a great year so far. I hope your fishing uh, experience has been equally positive so far this year. It's amazing how quickly uh, these tanks will overgrow. And uh, I had Bruce come down the other day, my fellow enthusiast who used to own a fish store up in Metuchen, New Jersey, many, many years ago. Ran it for about 30 years, I think, or 30, maybe 40 years. And he was sharing how different it was from decade to decade. The 70s were tough, 80s these were amazing, 90s were challenging, and he finally decided to retire. But anyway, he came on down, and we did our usual fishing trip like Ray and I used to do all the time. And uh, we had a very nice day, but I had to straighten out the tanks just a little bit uh, in anticipation of his coming, because he's showing off a little bit. He does such a beautiful job with the gardening in his particular tanks. And so what you'll see today is a little bit of that. Uh, it's been two days since I did it, and so they will still look pretty good before they get overgrown. And I'm not complaining. I mean, these plants uh, really are doing very well. And somebody did comment to one of the fish tube videos recently uh, where I shared again the maintenance, uh, the chemical maintenance of these tanks in terms of the CO2 every day, liquid CO2, and then a leaf zone application once a week. And he uh, complained that leaf zone is nothing better than just water. Well, I, I'm not sure what he's basing that on, but all I can tell you is I have never had this long a term of very positive plant growth uh, like I've had since I've been doing that. So uh, I, I would tend to push back on that particular comment. So anyway, uh, let's go take a look at some of the tanks here. And I'm trying something. I, I watched some of the videos on YouTube, and I'm absolutely amazed. I mean, there are people out there with uh, aquarium videos that generate 2 million or 3 million views. My God, how do they do that? I don't know, but anyway, you get ideas there and sometimes it inspires me and gives me new ideas. And so just using this backdrop uh, of a big TV scene from a former video, I'm going to be curious to see how this comes out. Anyway, let's get with it. We can start with the corner tank. Again, the pie-shaped, I believe it's a 55-gallon. And uh, what I tried to do in cleaning this up a little bit the other day was to give some more attention to the beautiful Amazon sword plants that are the center of this tank. And one of the drawbacks and also benefits of this tank is its depth. It's probably uh, 18 inches deep in terms of from front to back. And the Amazon sword do so well, but it was hidden with the plant growth the way it was. And so I moved everything back a little bit. And the other thing that I need to note, as you know, I've talked about the issue of uh, the plants that I bought up at Disc Madness. And you bought just a couple of sprigs from their mother plant, as it were. And this is the plant. And I was disappointed at the time, as I said before, because it was like oh, six or seven sprigs cut off from their big plant. Well, I am not disappointed over time. This plant just keeps growing and growing. And so this has all been trimmed back in order to uh, let some light in because it does get to the point where the light is being blocked by the growth of these plants. And you also will see up here in the background more of the same plant at full length before I've trimmed it. And so it does give a nice backdrop and color to the uh, overall garden scene that results. And by moving them back, I get that foreground of gravel, which gives more space for the fish to come out to. And so you see more of the activity of the fish here. Uh, the angelfish seem to be doing very well in this particular tank. If you recall, I was losing them in the bow tank, the other 60-gallon tank across the room here. And uh, so this time I took the four that are in this tank, two uh, marble-type angels, and then over here, two beautiful black angels. And they're doing very well over here now for over a month. 
And of course you have that red tail shark right there to the right. Uh, there's three red tail sharks in here. I'm pleasantly surprised that they're doing fairly well. Usually when I have more than one, uh, one becomes dominant and the other two disappear over time. And so I've got one that has not grown at all. It's still as small as when I first bought it. And lo and behold, the other two are growing up nicely, uh, maturing to the point where the coloration is black is black and the red is red and that have that beautiful white tip in the top dorsal fin. The other thing I'm very pleased with here is the sword tails. And you see a couple of pineapple swords right there in the center. And sword tails, for a while there, I couldn't find them in the stores. This goes back a couple years now. And uh, since then, I've been able to get them on a regular basis. And maybe it's a throwback to my early days of fish where a neighbor had a tank that was totally overgrown in plants and you'd sit there and just watch it and the, the fish would come out of the plants just briefly so you knew they were there and they were sword tails and they were beautiful. And so I've got a variety of sword tails and I'll introduce you to the newest pair over in the boat tank in just a minute. Interesting challenge with the neons that are here. And again, I don't know if you're going to be able to see what I'm going to talk about here or not, but if you get a close-up view, some of them have some type of growth on them, a little white dot either at the mouth or the tail, uh, to the point where I've actually thrown some of these away uh, for fear of passing on to others uh, that issue. So this one that I'm zooming in on right now, on the tail, there's a little white dot. And I've half been tempted to take a Q-tip and take the fish out and just see if I can wipe that off and will that help. Uh, it's not killing the fish, but it's obviously some type of issue there. And so I've got a nice school of neons in both tanks and I really love the beauty of the, of the neons. And when Bruce was down the other day, he was uh, sharing that in his tank with uh, dark blue gravel, and a black background. He just put in a bunch of neons and he said, boy, that tank looks so great. And so he's looking to get more. And then of course we have, still doing fairly well, the uh, pair, not pair, but two, because uh, they're not male and female necessarily, I think they're both male. They just disappeared in the background there, of dwarf gouramis. And they're the blue dwarf gouramis that you saw in the last time. And uh, lo and behold, when we went fishing, we did find in both stores the red variety of dwarf gouramis. And I, I wasn't going to pay the price for them. Pam bought these two uh, as a gift for me, so she paid the price and I never critiqued that. Uh, but I held back and now I'm regretting not having done it because I think they're a beautiful fish. They usually don't do well for me, but they are doing well in this particular tank now. and so complementing the two blue ones with two red ones and assuming they last uh, would be a nice addition here. But as I said, the Amazon sword is doing very well. There's two plants here and what you see is the smaller one uh, up front and I moved that out so it was getting plenty of light now and then behind it you have the bigger one. So there are two varieties but the leaf structure is just beautiful and Again, it was kind of hidden the way it was before. And then the other thing that's still not doing as well as I'd hoped is the Madagascar lace plant, the queen of aquarium plants, as they call it. Uh, for some reason or other, as I said before, the stems on this Madagascar lace plant, which are doing well, there's probably about eight to 10 stems here, are narrow leafed as you see them. The one is broadening out, but the other is staying pretty narrow. And I'll give you a contrast to that in just a minute. And the other mystery of why these plants come and go in terms of flourishing and then dwindling, you see down in that bright green right uh, the results of a long-standing banana plant. And in earlier versions you've seen beautiful big leaves on this. Now it's, it's bad down to a small leaf but it's been in there for a good year, so it's not something that because it's rooted or anything like that, that it's diminishing. It's just uh, going through a cycle, I guess. And so, <clears throat> here's one of those swords. I must admit, I totally enjoy, and so does my wife, 
uh, sitting back here in our living room and just almost like watching TV, your eyes are drawn to the activity of the fish and then you're sort of looking for any one fish that you don't think you've seen frequently. So there's a pair of loaches in here that every once in a while we say, geez, maybe we've lost them. But then all of a sudden there they are again. And so the coloration of the oranges of the platys and the swords, especially the uh, black wag swords or platys, both are in here, uh, really give a lot of color to this particular tank. And of course, like I said, I love the black angels, the red tail shark, and there's some tiger barbs in here. There's two uh, adult tiger barbs that are coming out there right now. And uh, we have that other green long finned tiger barb, the remaining one of the three, always has that strange swimming action about them. Um, but I haven't seen them in the store ever since, uh, except in a display tank at the fish factory one time. And uh, they don't have that there anymore. And so that's sort of an update here. It's a trimming, it's a replanting, it's putting the plants in more of a garden shape here, although it's still an overplanted tank, as I like to say, uh, as opposed to Bruce's fish tanks are beautiful gardens with sparse plants that do very well, and he's got a beautiful gardening about him, as Pam does here. The other thing that I'm pleased with too, and we'll see more in the other tank, is I've moved some of the guppies from the up uh, from the office tank, the young ones that are growing up, into uh, both this tank and, as you'll see, in the bow tank. And what I like about it is the coloration on the female tails and you can see right here with that orange tail and that beautiful female all of them now have colored tails and in the other schooling you'll see a, uh, a variety that speaks to the fact that they are a generation of guppies that I've raised here and the male is the same type of thing there's, there's a common uh, coloration to them that let you know that this is something that we've bred here. And so that red tail uh, is characteristic of the male young ones that are growing up here. But we'll see that in the other tank in just a minute. Finally lost that beautiful red betta that was in the left side of this betta tank. And uh, just yesterday with Bruce, as I said, out fishing, we uh, stopped by the favorite place to get bettas, which is a hidden reef over in Bristol, Pennsylvania. And so this one on the right, that's a $2.99 betta. And I'll tell you, you can spend 10, 15, 20, 25 dollars, and they don't get much prettier than that. The one on the right side, and I'm trying something different with the lighting so you can see, is the one that used to be on the right side. It's now on the left side and you can see the coloration with the light that I'm using from this camera now. And I also added a couple small platys in here just to get some activity to the tank. I felt that uh, it needed some activity to keep these fish involved with something, if that makes any sense at all. And so that's sort of an update on the betta tank. And both of those bettas are beautiful fish. each in their own right. Very pleased with this betta tank. Uh, the bettas in the big tanks just disappear and of course they also hunt down and eat any of the babies that are born there and so uh, this is a much better way to enjoy them I think. And now on the other side of our fish room this is the uh, bow tank as I call it because it is a rounded front face on it and uh, again the fertilization program is doing very well here too in contrast to the Madagascar lace plant and the thin leaves you see in that first tank this tank over here is one Madagascar lace plant and I've counted at least 30 leaves on it and they're all wide leaves as you can see here we'll zoom in on it in just a minute and uh, the Amazon swords are doing beautifully here too. There's a big one down here, a little bit lower, and then the big, very light colored one here. And the thing that I want to show you up close in just a minute 
is the acquisition of the other day uh, from the Hidden Reef of a beautiful pair of sword tails. Uh, large sword tails, but they still look pretty young. And I'm not sure, looking at the male here, he sort of has an arch in his back, so I'm not sure what I've got here. But anyway, let's take a closer look. Again, just having straightened this out a little bit recently, and while I can still see him, let me show you the other betta we introduced last time. This was a Christmas present for my wife. And when we lost that red one, I moved him over to the betta tank for a little bit. And he's a small one, but he hides up in the overgrowth there. And while you're there, look at that black molly. This is a baby that's grown up from uh, the pair we have in the other room in the office tank. And I love the liar tail on it. And so it's pretty small yet, but it's growing, and I moved them out into the big tank here to give them some more room to grow. Going back to what we were just talking about, there is the Madagascar lace plant. And you can see the size of the leaves here. And like I said, I counted there's more than 25 leaves on that plant. And so that whole corner is basically Amazon sword plant. I'm sorry, a Madagascar lace plant. And so it's a great place that the fish like to hide in. And the other thing that I was just talking about that you'll see here is how the guppies are schooling. And uh, you can see when we go in close that the females all have that beautiful yellow colored tail. So they're all obviously sisters. And the males all have that same bright red tail. So they're brothers. These are all babies that have grown up here. And uh, I've never seen them school like this before, but in this tank they tend to be up in the open area there. And so that's why I opened that up and moving some of the plants here. And uh, they really add some nice color. There's probably about uh, 15 of them. And as you can see, they uh, so often I watch these YouTubes and they've got tanks full of like hundreds of light colored guppies. And I'm always amazed at that. And then when I start looking at this, I say, wow, you know, we've got our own miniature uh, a school of same colored guppies here so uh, not desirous of what they have I'm proud of what we've got here and so you get a sense of just how this tank is doing um, again moved some of the plants back just a little bit to give uh, room in the front uh, sort of framing in the garden if you would and uh, we got there to the left here's the uh, the male swordtail that I just got from the Hidden Reef, $5.99 each, and I don't know if we're going to get a good picture of him, but he is, he's a handsome uh, swordtail, that's for sure. And so, that's it. You can see the tail on him. He's got a beautiful, uh, they're, they're got black twi uh, twin bars, they call them. There he is. And you can see that back fin has black on the top as well as the bottom before the fin, uh, the sword end of it goes out. But he's a gorgeous uh, fish and his mate, if you will, is over hiding behind that Madagascar lace plant. I don't know if we'll get a chance to see her or not, but they were just so beautiful and all the fish were the same size, of course. And then we have right here one of those pineapple swords uh, that has been around for a long while. And so in this tank I've got a pair of each and uh, hoping to breed them. See I do have I've moved some of the pregnant females into the office tank and I'm seeing some colored babies now so it's working and while I'm not trying to breed them as such I certainly accept any that are born. I can see her back in here. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to make her out or not. She just went back further. Uh, I'm trying to see her through the lens that I've got. There she is. She's beautiful too. And uh, doesn't show signs of being pregnant at this point, which usually gives them a much prettier uh, look when they're that full. But uh, back behind that leaf, she's hiding out on us. And you can get some sense of what we're talking about here when we say we've got a pair. There's a lot, there are a lot of other fish in this particular tank that uh, I'm very pleased with. 
this tank also has a bunch of neons in it, probably about 10 I think, and they're doing well. And the tank is so grown out that the fish really can thrive here and you'll never see them because they tend to stay in the grasses, uh, both by way of protection and also just uh, their, nat their natural way of doing it. And so this tank is doing very well. Um, my other favorite plant is the corkscrew val. And you can see here the one that I've got left. And I've been losing the leaves on that too. So that spiraled long leaf. That's the corkscrew val, valisneria. And uh, I just moved that out so it was getting more light. I'm hoping that that helps maintain its vital growth. You see there a, a tricolored shark. We've got a couple red tail sharks in here. And uh, a lot of nice coloration and it's a fun tank to just sit and watch as the fish come and go out of the greenery. And uh, we do have that, I don't, I'm not sure what it is, an Indian algae eater. We've got two of them in here of equal size, the big ones. And I'm going to tell you, I have absolutely no algae in this particular tank to speak of. They're constantly cleaning it. And uh, opposed to the corner tank where I have to have to clean the glass on a regular basis. So part of that is those two fish keep that. Plus I've got two plecos in this tank and they tend to come out once in a while. You'll see them once in a while but uh, they're getting big and again I've got the same issue I've had before of how to get them out of this tank if I wanted to. And it's so grown over with plants that it's actually impossible to get any fish out of here uh, that wants to hide in those plants. The other day I came up with a good idea though. If you wanted to catch your, a pleco, uh, what you want to do is get one of those uh, devices or ornaments, whatever you want to call them, that they hide in. So uh, like a tube shaped uh, appliance put in here and the plecos and any of those kind of fish would make th that their home. And once they do that, then it's a case of putting the net at either end and chase it through and you should be able to catch them. So that's my latest theory. We'll see what happens when I finally decide what I'm going to do with that. But anyway, this is, uh, as I said, the bow tank. And uh, finally have a nice pair, uh, two pair of sword tails in here that have beautiful coloration on them, as you can see. So I'm very pleased with that. And there's another uh, different black molly. This one doesn't have the same uh, lyre tail uh, that the other one I showed you had. And so it's interesting, you can tell which ones are which by those uh, unique characteristics, even though, hey, a black molly is a black molly, right? No, not really. And so they're very pretty. I hope they grow up nicely. And uh, we've got quite a few more babies I added some more babies in this particular tank. They seem to be doing well up in that Madagascar lease forest. Uh, and we've got quite a few more in the office tank that have been born and eventually will come out into a larger tank when we get that growth to the point where they will thrive here. So anyway, and this is a better shot of that Amazon sword plant that I was showing you from before. Uh, looking at it from above, gorgeous leaves, very healthy leaves. And that's got probably 40 leaves on it. And then just coming over, you see some of that colorful plant that we got at Disc Madness. And again, some of the leaf structure of that Madagascar lace plant that fills up this whole corner of the tank beautifully so from my perspective. So anyway, let's move into the office tank. Okay, we're here in the office tank and I'm going to show you the before picture right now. And that's the overgrowth, especially of this one plant. I don't know what the name of this plant is, but it grows very well and it gets very thick. And so if anybody has a suggestion of what the name of this particular plant is, the one with the that I'm showing you right here, let me know in your comments below. Meanwhile, as you'll see down below, I just put some food in there. And I told you the swordtail 
Uh, I've got two pairs of sword tails in here. And there's one of the female um, red swords. And I just put a an algae tab in there. So they go wild down there, but it's a good way of bringing the fish out to your attention. Uh, you see the pair of black mollies that have the liar tails on them that I found that one time over in the fish factory. And uh, we may get to see the two clown loaches. There's the other female uh, sword tail, the uh, pineapple sword. Here comes the clown loach, one of them. And it's funny, this is a good sized clown loach. They've grown well in this tank. In fact, I'm afraid to move them out of this tank because in the other tanks, uh, I did lose the loaches in there to ick. And while I know how to treat them better now, I, I don't want to ruin what I've got going on here. But over in the Hidden Reef, they had one of these clown loaches, uh, a little bit bigger than what you saw just a minute ago here, and maybe see again. Uh, and the price on it was $110. And I said to Bruce, I said, wow, I said, if I could get 50 for each of these, I'd be happy and uh, would start over again. But anyway, uh, we had a nice time. It was a disappointing trip in one sense, and that is we didn't come away with much. He bought a, uh, a betta also, but he was looking for specific types of fish for his small 10-gallon tanks in his new fish room. And you can see both the females there. They're a good size. And, oops, here we go. The two clown loaches. And like I said, they're doing very well. And as soon as you put a plant tab in there, they come out. But I have no way of getting them out of this tank <laughs> to try put them in the other tank if I dare do that. Uh, this, the growth is so thick, which lends itself to the breeding, uh, the dropping of babies here. There's plenty of place for the babies to hide. And so this tank has literally, and I'm not exaggerating when I say hundreds of uh, baby fish of all different sizes, and some of them are the black mollies that I was telling you about just before. You may see them against the green of the plants here. Um, there's a couple orange-black, uh, half-black mollies. I think they're mollies as opposed to platies. And uh, you see that one pink or yellow sword tail growing up. And there's probably the parent right next to it. And so this is giving me quite a bit of fish to go out into the other tanks, and that's why the other tanks look so overgrown right now, both in terms of the plants and also the fish. And so I need to straighten this tank out a little bit. There's a beautiful Amazon sword plant in the center here that's not shown at all the way it's overgrown. So uh, we're going to interrupt and uh, do just a little bit of trimming and see what I can come back with. You might get some idea of the number of babies in here if I give a shot here from above the tank because above these plants uh, you see a lot more activity in terms of babies and I don't have the right lighting for it. The LED lights are giving me that blue tinge to everything. But I think you can see the activity of so many babies in this particular tank and see how the plants are protecting them. Okay, this is the after shot that I promised, and uh, there's a lot of babies floating around in this tank that you may or may not be able to see in the video. Let me just zoom in a little bit and see if you can make them out. But they're all over the place. And uh, what I did, and this is my downfall according to Bruce, I can't throw away plants. We uh, get such pride in growing them out that I just keep planting them down below. And so uh, all I did was take that plant that I asked you what kind it was, that you see in the background here, and just clipped them all off and moved them down into bunches. And uh, they will grow up again, and I'll do it again. But I wanted to show you that Amazon sword plant that's just on the right side of this particular tank. And I also want to show you how big those leaves are. So I'm going to zoom out here for a minute. And I just counted the leaves. There's about 25 leaves on this Amazon sword in this 30-gallon hex tank. And uh, 
I did trim off a couple leaves and just to give you some sense of how big they are here's those leaves they were floating at the top of the tank and so I'm not sure how many inches they are this has got to be about 25 inch tank and there's 25 of those leaves here that I'm taking a couple that looks either got some algae growth on them or they're got some holes in them and so throwing those away but something else that I saw on YouTube that got me interested and so now I'm cleaning the glass with these magic sponges and you got to make sure that it says there's no chemicals in them and this said no chemicals and also found out that you can buy them in Target you can buy them in all the stores for $5.98 for two or whatever the heck price they go for or you can go to the dollar store and you can get a pack of two of them for a dollar and so that's what I did and one of them actually has uh, some extra uh, material here that makes it real good for scraping the inside of these glass tanks and so I'm trying that for the first time and so far very pleased the fish have not had any adverse effects and uh, the video uh, gave a good story uh, to their safety and all I'm saying is you can get them for a very reasonable cost if you go to your local dollar store. Not Dollar Tree, but the one that has the maximum price of a dollar. It's amazing what they have in there, which correspond to what we see in the other stores for mega bucks versus. But you can see just by freeing this up how much uh, more activity we can see in the fish. Because they're now in the front. And the babies are still safe. There's plenty of plants up there to protect them. And you can see how big those two female sword tails are and I've got a male of each type in there with them uh, to keep them pregnant. I know once once they get impregnated uh, they can yield several broods of baby fish uh, but I thought a male in there would keep them happier and uh, also keep them more pregnant. And so the other thing that's interesting here is I've got some split tail guppies. Hadn't seen them in years and so uh, had occasion to get a couple and they're doing well. I'm, I'm pleased. Water wisteria just sort of holds its own, doesn't do much more. And like I said, there's the... She's big. I mean, you don't get a sense of it in this video, how big she is. But anyway. And like I said, I'm very pleased with the clown loaches in here. And you can see one of those baby sword tails. So anyway, that's the office tank and it gives me great pleasure to be uh, here working in the office and to be able to just turn my head and distract myself by looking at the fish going by. It's a very peaceful scene and uh, I mean, if you're going to have fish, it's nice to be able to enjoy them. And we have busy lives so it's nice to integrate into those lives uh, the fish. There's the one pair I'm telling you about. He's a pineapple sword, so he really matches up with the other female, but that doesn't stop him, of course. So, hey, hope you uh, have a great 2020 coming upon you this year, and uh, look forward to sharing more with you, and I thank you for your comments. really appreciate it, and uh, especially when you're commenting on Bruce's. He doesn't follow the YouTubes as much as I do, but any comment out there, I try to respond, and I appreciate you taking the time to give feedback. Especially if you can identify that plant for me, okay? There's the pair I was telling you about. Love those sword tails.